You know, Mowgli there in that video reminds me of those who I've seen who are high on some kind of controlled substance. So I ask, is that the way that you want your surgeon to be as he or she is about to perform a surgery on you? No. How about your first responders? Ah, yes, your police officers, firefighters, your lifeguards. How about your lawmakers, judges, presidents? No? Well, how would you like it if I, your minister, was also that way? If that applies to me, then what about all of you? The church, that is, the priesthood of all believers. Now, there is amendment out there, Amendment 3, that's going to be on the ballot in November. If it passes, smoking marijuana, recreational, will be legal. So does that mean that we, the church, the priesthood of all believers, can go out and get high? No. I want us to take a look again at what the Apostle Peter wrote for us and to us, the church, in chapter 5 of his letter. You will find that on page 6 of your worship folder, but I think it's also at the top of the note sheet as well. But we're going to look again at 1 Peter chapter 5, and we're going to look at that very first verse, verse 8. This is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be alert and of what? Sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Okay, show of hands. How many of you want to be safe from being devoured by the safe, the serpent, the devil? All of you? Good. So, Peter is reminding us of what God has given us so that we can stay safe from this terrible, prowling devil. God has given us a mind, a sharp and clear mind, a mind that can be alert to the dangers and the threats of the devil. It is a mind that actually allows for us to use our senses and perceive the things around us and the threats that, are, that are, are near. It is a mind that actually releases endorphins so that we can respond better to threats. It helps us to learn from our situations so that we know how to stay safe. God wants us to be safe from this devil. He has given us a mind. He has given us a clear, alert, and sober mind. So, as we then talk about this prowling serpent, then, he does not want us to be sober and alert. They call it the coddling or the caudal luring, caudal luring. Caudal luring is what scientists have observed that snakes actually do by wagging their tails to entice their prey to come closer because they're curious. And as they come closer, snap, it grabs a hold of the prey and devours them. It's called the caudal luring. Well, the devil has been doing this caudal luring ever since Adam and Eve stood at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The devil is always trying to tempt us, always on the prowl, always trying to bring us in closer so that he can grab a hold of us and devour us completely. So this being devoured then by the devil really means that you're going to go to hell. See, the Apostle Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthians, explains how those who are drunkards 
among a whole bunch of other sinners, those who are drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. I say again, those who are drunkard, those who habitually and on a regular basis as part of their life numb and dull their, their minds with substances will not inherit the kingdom of God. There is a kingdom of God, but Martin Luther also explains in the large catechism how there is also, also a kingdom of the devil. The kingdom of the devil is something that we not only experience in the life to come if we're condemned, but also even in this life. The kingdom of the devil is what we experience now in the disease, the despair, the pain and suffering, the disgrace, the death. It is essentially the tragic misery and heartache that we suffer and experience here. So what I want to tell you is that as we find more and more people falling into this trap of the devil, we can expect to experience more of the devil's kingdom here in this misery and heartache. Just this past Friday, I was invited to open a luncheon with prayer. It was a luncheon of the DUI task force. And at this luncheon, where police officers and various civic leaders had gathered, the state attorney, Dave Ehrenberg, got up as the keynote speaker and shared about a few cases of tragic misery. One particular one that he talked about happened in Boca Raton, right near Meisner Park. A man who was impaired, his mind was impaired by alcohol and marijuana, sped through an intersection, slammed into this car, and killed a 21-year-old young man. In places like Canada where marijuana has become legalized and decriminalized, accidents leading to ER treatment or death have risen 475%. But it isn't only on the road that we experience this kingdom of the devil. We can actually experience it in a variety of ways as people began to use and consume more marijuana. Marijuana is associated, is the, it is the most common, second to alcohol, drug that is used when there is sexual assault. It is associated, common use of marijuana is associated with acts of violence, weapon violence, assaults, reckless endangerment, and all kinds of other bodily injury. So even now, we can experience this kingdom of the devil. We can experience that tragedy, misery, and also the heartache as we find people whose minds are not clear, who are not alert, but instead are impaired. So Peter, then, as we find ourselves in that kind of world, is reminding us of a gift that God has given us. It is the gift of a mind. It is a gift of a clear and alert mind. A mind that is savvy to the tricks and the schemes and the caudal luring of the serpent. A mind that can inherit, not the kingdom of the devil, but inherit the kingdom of God. So, a time when I was in the coil of the serpent, a time when I was experiencing the caudal luring was back when I was a freshman in college. I had gone to a party of some classmates, and while we were there, we were invited to go into the living room and sit in this circle. And at the time, I did not understand how close I was to the devil until a person took out like a crude-looking cigarette, and lit it. 
And then when the smoke began to emanate and spread through this circle of us, that pungent, skunky smell, then I understood what was happening. Then I understood where I was. After this first person took a hit, they passed it on to their left, to another smoker, and then to another smoker, coming around the circle, getting closer and closer to me. Now, I'm sure that most of you have probably been in a situation like this. In fact, they say about, oh, 50% of us, 50% of Americans, have actually tried marijuana before. Even a former president said that he smoked it, but he didn't inhale. Wink, wink. But it is hard to say no, isn't it, when you're in a situation like that? I was there in that circle. I didn't get up to excuse myself because of peer pressure. You see, conformity and peer pressure is among the top three reasons that people actually smoke marijuana. They don't want to stand out. They don't want to be laughed at. They don't want to look lame. But other reasons that people smoke it is similar. They want to bond with others in the circle. But also, it seems that people will turn to smoking marijuana or taking controlled substances because they are trying to deal with the stresses and the challenges and the difficulties in this world, the boredom. They want to do something pleasurable and fun. So an interesting statistic is that of the nations, among the nations, Israel, yes, Israel is the one country where people smoke the most marijuana every day. 20% Israel. But the United States is not far behind with 17% of people smoking marijuana. Now, this number has doubled since 2013, according to statistics and surveys. And I believe that has something to do with the fact that fewer and fewer people believe that smoking marijuana is a sin. A survey found that 70% of adults in the U.S. do not believe that smoking marijuana is immoral or a sin. And indeed, you will not find in the Bible a verse that says, you shall not smoke marijuana. But what we do find today, what we do find today in these words from Peter, is that we want to have an alert and sober mind. Amen? We do not want to have our minds foggy and unclear when the serpent's trying to lure us. We do not want to be devoured fully and taken down into hell and lose our inheritance in the kingdom of God. Therefore, God has, in fact, given us a mind. A mind that is not poisoned by intoxicants, but a mind that is clear and sharp. Not an animal mind that's lured by a swinging tail, but those of us who know, uh -uh, that's the devil, that's the serpent, I'm staying away from that. God has given you and me a clear, sharp, intelligent, knowledgeable, learned mind. What astounds me, though, what really, really astounds me, is as I was sitting there in that circle and this marijuana joint was coming around to me, Jesus was also there Two. Jesus came into the devil's kingdom. Jesus came into our tragic misery. He came into our heartache. Not to smoke, but to be sober. Jesus came to be sober. Being sober, Jesus refused, refused to shorten his own or ease his own suffering. Being sober, Jesus refused the taunts and the temptation of the devil 
to take a stone and make it into bread while he was fasting in the wilderness. Being sober, Jesus refused to take the drink of the mind-dulling gall vinegar in his crucifixion. Being sober, Jesus refused, refused the temptation to come off that cross, but instead remained there with us until he died. Jesus, being sober, he truly did not inhale. Jesus came to exhale. Jesus died exhaling. As Mark writes in his gospel, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. And the risen Jesus came back and entered the circle of men in distress and breathed on him his Holy Spirit. We breathe in and have breathed on us the breath of Jesus whenever we hear the word. When we hear the message of Christ, the Holy Spirit is breathed on us. When we hear the message of Jesus preached and proclaimed and professed, the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, is breathed on all of us. This takes me back to how there was a time when I know of God's breathing on me. I know of God's breathing on us as we find ourselves in those circles. The last time I was in a circle in someone's living room, it was not to smoke marijuana. It was to inhale and exhale the message and the breath of God. I was in a home Bible study hosted by a friend. And there we heard the message of God spoken from the word. And there, and we shared, as we shared and professed our testimonies, we breathed out the message of God. As we gather in those kinds of circles to hear God's word and to receive God's word, we receive the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us, Paul actually, in his first letter to the Corinthians, tells us, those who have the Spirit of God can now judge, make good judgment about all things. We no longer have the Spirit of the devil, the Spirit of the world. We now have the Spirit of God. And we who have the Spirit of God have, listen to this, the mind of Christ. When you have heard the word of God, when God has breathed on you his Holy Spirit, you now have the mind of Christ, the mind that is alert, the mind that is sober, the mind that refuses the temptation, the caught alluring of the devil and breathes out the breath of life to all of us. We have the mind of of Christ. So as this amendment passes, what does that mean for us? It means for us the things that Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans. He says, do not be conformed to the world. Instead, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And that's what repentance is. The Greek is metanoia, which means to have a transformation of your mind, to have a metamorphosis of mind, to get a new mind. When we repent and turn to Christ, we now get a new mind. We have the Holy Spirit breathe on us, so now we have the mind of Christ. We have now the means to be alert, to be sober, to resist, to not be lured in by the devil but instead receive the inheritance that God has given us. That's why 
when I'm here with you, I enter a new kind of circle in the kingdom of God, a new kind of circle of repentance. I join every single one of you in a circle right up here where we consume not the smoke of the devil, but the body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and the strength to live a new life. Here we are transformed. Here we are, the mind of Christ that makes us alert and gives us that inheritance of everlasting life. Some years ago at my previous congregation, there was a man by the name of Rick who got a new mind. Somehow, some way, the word of God that was breathed on him convicted him. He was the father of three children, three very small and young children, and he would smoke marijuana every day after work. But somehow that word reached him. He was so convicted, he repented. He came in to me and he says, you know, Pastor, I've been doing this and I, I'm, I'm missing out on my family. I'm not even alert or aware of what's going on. I need to stop. And he quit that day, cold turkey, stood up in front of the congregation and gave a testimony of how he was giving his mind back to Christ. For my time there at that church, I saw a man who had indeed uh, saw a man who had indeed loved the Lord God with all his heart, with all his soul, and indeed with all his mind. Today, we're not conforming to this world. We're not conforming to the laws or even the liberties of this nation. We're conforming to the mind of Christ, which makes us alert and sober and guarantees us an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Peter is reminding us that the time, is in, the time end is near. He writes that in this letter in chapter 4 that we're reading today. Time is near, so be of sober mind so that you can pray. So when we come here, we worship not only with our heart, but also with our mind. We praise God with our mind and with our hearts, a God who is saving us and keeping us safe from the devil. At that party, the joint came to me. I swallowed, I was nervous, I was scared. But the only thing I could think to say was, no, no thanks. They pushed it at me, no thanks. And so they reached across and gave it to the other person who said no thanks and gave it to the other person. And maybe one other person smoked it, but after that, no one else smoked it and they finally put it out. I believe all we need in this world are people of God, who have the mind of Christ. Those who can be a positive influence to others. That as we're alert and as we're sober, we can say no to the luring of the devil. We can make a difference by our commitment to loving God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our strength. That's what the implication, the change in the law means for us. Is that it's an opportunity for us in this kingdom of the devil to be those who stand and make a firm stand for Christ. Those of us who in our heartache and our misery are strengthened and encouraged through the word of Christ that has breathed on us. Today, a lot of us, all of us maybe to some extent, have had our minds fogged by the smoke of the devil, the poison of his venom. But we have a Jesus Christ who entered our circle, entered that devil's kingdom, to breathe his word on us so that we would have his mind, a mind by which we can face the challenge of this world. What distinguishes us from all creatures in the world? What makes the homo sapien sapien is the fact that we have a mind. We're not lured by the swinging tail of a devil, but instead we're drawn closer by the extended hand of Jesus Christ. I invite all of you today with alert and sober minds, to take his hand, to receive his invitation, to come into his circle and receive the forgiveness of sins and the breath of life, which promises us paradise with our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who's given us our minds. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.